My name is Erica Ford. I am the CEO and founder of Life Camp Incorporated. I am also one of the co-architects of the New York City Crisis Management System um, that's based here in New York, of course, out of the Mayor's Office to Prevent Gun Violence. It's over 60 organizations and 21 sites across the five boroughs. Life Camp is a community-based nonprofit organization that's focused on the reduction of gun violence and the shifting of mindset, um, helping families heal after the impact of trauma, either through uh, gun violence or other incidents of violence that has happened tragically through their life. And so we're based in Jamaica, Queens, and you know, we, although a small organization have big footprints in the city. The pandemic has definitely put things on a freeze, <laughs> um, literally and uh, facetiously. Um, the pandemic has interrupted the process of us going out and providing direct intervention and mediation, but the pandemic has also, in a way, interrupted people's ability to go out and commit acts of violence in the manner in which they did before. Um, so we do see a shift in the number of incidents of gun violence, right? From interpersonal violence, maybe gang violence and all stuff. But we do see an increase of incidents of violence in households um, and just random cases of um, domestic violence. Um, and domestic being that's happening with people you know. Um, one of the, and that was in the beginning stages of the pandemic. Now that, that um, things have shifted a little, we are more outside, um, handing out PPE equipment, handing out food, um, dealing with the question of social distancing and making sure that not only are people remaining in a, in a manner of social distance so they don't transfer the disease, but also making sure that the police and the community remain in a manner of non-conflict, you know? And so um, the other day, for example, we had a three hour meeting with the mayor and the police commissioner, and I would say um, just navigating through how we can co-produce public safety in the city and just help each other maintain a sense of ordinance, I would say, um, but also maintain a safety for our people who we've seen getting beat up viciously um, for not wearing a mask or not practicing social distancing. Um, and so the pandemic increased in a way um, our ability voice in 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 this matter of of police and community and how we can better deal in in this type of of traumatizing situation because when you look at the pandemic in our community we were the hardest hit um many matriarchs and patriarchs of families have died um many families lost more than one family member the virus, um, we had over 55,000 cases in Queens, um, and a lot of them in our area of Southeast Queens. And so when you talk about how it impacted our work, it shifted our work into teaching wellness, teaching people how to, I, I wouldn't say survive the pandemic, but to survive the pandemic, um, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, and most of all, physically. Um, and so we shifted to online classes. We shifted to online classes and given stipends to high-risk individuals who would go outside, um, wanted to keep them inside, you know. Um, we went to online classes and teaching wellness and teaching financial everything from wealth building to how do you get your loans? How do you, you know, negotiate with your landlord not to pay your rent? How do you hold on to the rent money so that when the time comes, you can pay the rent? Um, 
And so, and then we went to also something called healing through laughter and just giving a people a vehicle to heal and to laugh and to know that it's going to be all right, you know, and, and to break the monotony of being inside all week and trying to be the teacher and the chef and the, the disciplinary and the mother and the lover and the, you know, the parent and the friend and the, you know, the zoom, 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 you know, um, and so we, we, we designated Friday as Feel Good Friday, and we would do those healing through laughter classes. And so comedians also lost their means of income, and so it was supporting the comedians as well in a manner of uh, having them provide this laughter to, to people who were hurt, you know, and so... It has definitely shifted the work that we do. Um, we are, are doing a lot of, you know, just keeping people safe, um, handing out wellness kits, um, making sure that people, young people in particular, are remaining social distance. And then still mediating out here, we had four people shot last weekend not this weekend it just passed but the weekend before that we had four people shot or killed um and so still dealing with violence and uh, the potential of violence in the community and so we have to bring in more people possibly to to deal with the social distancing issue as the weather gets warmer and then also with the canceling of summer youth because of the pandemic we can't go somewhere without young people working, without young people engaged. And so we are uh, working on, you know, shifting to online classes, creative social distancing kind of engagements, um, helping um, young people help local businesses get back into, you know, thing by joining, lear learning new trades, um, getting certification and, and in different things so that they can go out and, and um, be a part of building back the community. I think that what we've learned from this pandemic is to love ourselves. <laughs> um, we've learned to be with ourselves. We've learned to be creative. We've learned through no matter what, things are going to be all right. And that we are resilient people. On the other hand, I think that what some of the things that we have not learned in the pandemic is the power of our voice and our vote. And I say that because we are still low on our census numbers. Um, nobody is thinking about any election. And we don't see the, the, the direct correlation to poor leadership and the spread of the virus and the death of so many people, you know, and and young people in particular are not taking it serious, you know? And so I, I, uh, I hope that I'm wrong. Um, all politics to me are local. And we have to, you know, understand and see the need for us to use the power of our voice, our vote, our knowledge, you know, we have to read, we have to be informed, we have to take care of ourselves because the other thing that we learned is the reason why we are the most um, accessible to the virus deadly force um, is because of our preconditions, you know, and our preconditions come with our preconditions, right? Our preconditions of poverty, our preconditions of um, food deserts, our preconditions of traumatized communities, which increase stress and um, the reduction of even the ability to care for one's health with the lack of proper health care um, and hospitals and those other facilities. 
Um, and some of those are a direct relationship to the census, you know, because that's how they break down the needs and the distribution of, of wealth and resources. And so um, I don't think that we put those two together on a strong level so that we can make the changes that we need. And so that's the other thing that as Life Camp we're doing. Uh, we go out and we, we either go out or we're on various kinds of Zoom platforms and communications asking people to fill out their census. And a lot of people have not filled out their census yet. One thing is um, joining us, come to Life Camp Inc. Um, check out what we're doing. Um, every day we, we have something. It's Spiritual Sundays, Movement Mondays, Talking Money on Tuesday, Wellness Wednesdays, Hang Out with the Young People on Thursday, and Feel Good Fridays. Um, and so every, you know, mostly every day of the week, um, we have something for folks to engage in at six o'clock um, every day on our Instagram live. And, and they can, you know, get some tools or some trinkets of knowledge that they can help spread or use for their own lives. Um, people can text all in for peace, all in, all in um, and the number four, all in for peace to 51555, 51555, and join the campaign of helping us build peace um, throughout our nation. Um, people can, you know, go hit the link uh, and donate <laughs> and um, support the work. Um, we're doing a fundraising campaign for the month of June to raise a million dollars. And we want to raise a million dollars to give a thousand young people jobs for this summer um, because there's a lot of young people that won't have jobs this summer, right? And so um, they can, you know, once again, go to our lifecampinc.com, donate and, and donate to Life Camp and help us. They can do from $15 to sponsor an hour for a young person, or they can um, donate what they can to help give a young person a job, help keep them engaged. We all know how important it was to be engaged during the summer. And, you know, also on both sides, on the side of, of giving young people something to do and some of their own money so that when it's time to go back to school, they could just buy their own stuff, but also to give parents a break, you know, and help them to just have a space to just breathe and know that their kids is protected and having fun. And so with the canceling of summer youth music and the canceling of summer camp and summer school and all of those different things, um, we want to provide something and we want to give them the opportunity to also play a role in helping build back their community through these jobs. I think that it's important for people to, to be the most productive person in their own life. Um, I think that, that we can't call ourselves living if we don't step into our life and really be productive and purposeful human beings. Um, I think a lot of times we just flow with the day and we allow the day to flow with us. And we're not, you know, getting from the day, the minute, the hour, the breath, what it is that we want from life. And so I think it's very important to go in and, and focus on your vision and focus on the vision that you want for your family, the vision you want for yourself, the spiritual vision that you want to be connected to, to say that when that dash comes to an end, because the dash is going to come to an end because death is part of life. And so although we've lost so many people, we can look at it as, as, as we talked about earlier from a space of fear and say, oh my God, I lost my loved one. I can't move on. Or we can look at it as the divine purpose of them repurposing their purpose in your life and your vision and your mission to help you in another way, to be that guiding light that gives you the ability to shine where you never thought you could see, or to step where you never thought your foot could reach, or to imagine where you never thought your eyes could see. You know, And so to have a purpose in life is to truly live. To have a vision is to truly fulfill what you're here for, you know. And so I don't want this, this virus 
and this pandemic to people to to make people think that you're hopeless that like oh my god it's over i'm stuck in the house no you are reshifted you know as sarah jake roberts um did a sermon on the ground has shifted and so your ground has shifted and your life is still breathing you know and so we focus on the breath because we say the breath is it it is everywhere it is omnipotent right it is part of everybody at every time as you take your breath where you are as i take my breath where i i, I am we are interconnected by the breath of this world and so let's be purposeful in this world and let's truly understand that our being is not defined by our present conditions and everything is going to be all right even in death if we could just take time and get centered and get centered with our breath and just breathe and feel the coolness of the breath coming in and the warmth of it going out. And understand that our breath is the light that shines through us every day. Our breath gives us life. Our breath gives us purpose. Our breath tells us we are still here for a reason. And so allow the breath to move through your body every day. Taking time to just feel your entire body from your toes to the crown of your head. Using your breath to connect to all of those who you think you lost, to all of those that you love. Be one with your breath. Be still and take time every day to just sit and be still and connect, align with yourself and your vision. Be alkaline and eat so that you can live a healthy life. And remind yourself always by that good word, or that moment that you are a beautiful and purposeful person, a human being who has value in not only your life, but those lives around you. And so use it to bring light to yourself and everyone you interact with. Thank you.